Oh, hey. I've been feeling a little bit philosophical today. That's why I'm scrolling through a bunch of Chrome tabs. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. Gaming has been somewhat stale lately, and I'm here to figure out why. Modern gaming is in a bit of an iffy state. 2023 has been an absolute blast of a year for gaming, which saw the release of numerous fantastic games. But with them, there are the scoundrels. The Lord of the Rings, oh wait, excuse me. The Lord of Ring Gollum, Redfall, The Day Before. There have been a ton of mediocre crap that came out last year and it's baffling since all of these games I mentioned came out around the same time games like Resi 4 Remake, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, and numerous other hits that made such wide appeals. Still, even with all of these great games, it's important to note that these games use a ton of resources. Spider-Man 2 can only be played on the PS5 and not on the PS4. A lot of these games, mainly AAA games, take up a lot of space and usually demand higher end systems during this generation of gaming. And you don't know whether the game is a hit or a miss when you actually download and play it on your console by deleting all your other games cause screw you says Activision. Not only that, but games are plagued with microtransactions and a portion of the game's content is locked behind a paywall. This doesn't apply to every game, but I am noting a few honorable mentions. Battle passes, loot crates, just to name a few. A game like Baldur's Gate 3 is truly a miracle to behold in an era of microtransactions in video games. But Baldur's Gate is a miracle, and it's not very often we get games where not only players can get the full experience without paying additional bucks, but also be able to deliver what the fans had wanted for a game that took a lot of time to come out. So what do we need to fill that void? Obviously, AAA game companies are overworking their employees to work on a tile that's full of business crap, which is why we have the indie devs. Instead of the usual AAA big budget blockbusters like Call of Duty, indie games have become a new trend that threatens the industry in a good way. Indie games are a breath of fresh air from big budget games. Usually, they take up a lot less space to download, and you still get a ton of playtime with these guys. Indie games are created by independent developers or indie devs, often with limited resources and funding. These games usually are distributed to digital marketplaces like Steam and Epic Games, and you can browse a whole lot of them in these stores. But to truly know how indie games became so popular that they even have their own category in various gaming marketplaces, we need to learn how they came to be. There are still debates regarding the first ever indie game, but one of the first known examples of this is Space War, which was released in 1963. As the years pass, more and more people start making their own games as PCs become more accessible. However, at the time, it was harder for them to sell their games. They would either have to publish their game by making their own publishing company or find someone willing to publish it, both of which are pretty difficult and expensive choices. Eventually, with the internet becoming more and more common, game engine developers started offering their software at low to no cost for indie devs. With Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation making game development easier, indie devs had a place to sell their games to everyone in the globe. Still, during this time, the video game industry was dominated by a handful of large companies. But since then, with the rise of digital media and accessible development tools, indie devs have been able to make and release their games without the need for a publisher. One of the most important impacts of indie games is that they have led to a more diverse and innovative landscape of video games. New ideas and gameplay mechanics are brought to the industry, pushing the boundaries of what is possible in games. Every time you play an indie game, there's always this one thing that this game has that makes it unique compared to other titles, and that's what I think the magic indie games have. Games like Paper Please and Return of the Obra Dinn have brought new gameplay mechanics and storytelling approaches to the industry. Just last year, I played Celeste and my god, despite being a challenging game, it was a wonderful masterpiece and it definitely had a lasting impact on me, as it changed my perspective not only on video games, but on life. See, see what I just did there earlier? I was being ironic. 
Another thing about indie games is that they've given a platform to underrated developers in the industry. Even now, there's still a ton of great games that not a lot of people are playing because they're often overshadowed by big budget releases by AAA companies. Indie devs from diverse backgrounds and perspectives have been able to create games that speak to their experiences and culture. The end result of all this would make players feel more represented in ways that large video game companies have been struggling with their own titles. Indie game development has a ton of benefits. It allows devs to have creative control over their games. Since indie games are usually developed by a relatively small amount of people, it's easier for indie devs to maintain their vision and have the freedom to create the games they want to make. There's no boss or this one guy to announce strict requirements and deadlines when it comes to indie development. And I think that says a lot because you expect a video game company with a large amount of employees would be able to make and release games faster when, when they usually just keep adding irrelevant stuff like microtransactions and the like, and features that either do nothing or make the game worse. This may not be a real or accurate representation of AAA game companies, but that's just how I view it. You ruined everything for me. Indie games demand fewer resources and smaller budgets, which is why indie game development can be more financially rewarding for developers. Even if your game isn't a huge hit, you may still get a hefty amount of pay. But if your game does become a huge hit, you will be remembered for a long, long time. Indie game development can lead to greater recognition and success for low-level developers. Games like Minecraft have become a global phenomenon and made their developers household names. Successes like this are rare in the big-budget gaming industry, where the company is fierce and marketing budgets are enormous. Which is why if you're an indie dev, Always be creative. Do something that sets apart your work from others. Eventually, you'll be proud of what you've done. Even though indie game development has many benefits and has become a new trend in the industry, it doesn't mean it doesn't have any challenges. One of the biggest challenges is funding. While developing a small indie game development doesn't require a hefty amount of money and resources, it still demands resources, such as time, equipment, and software. Funding can be difficult as investors may be hesitant to invest in an unproven developer or game. However, platforms like Kickstarter and Patreon have made it easier for the devs to crowdfund their projects and get the financial support they need to develop their games. But this doesn't always work or result in a success. Mighty Number no. 9, for example, while it had a successful Kickstarter campaign, the game faced criticism for delays and unmet expectations. The final product did not live up to the hype, leading to disappointment among those who supported the campaign and it ended up being another Mega Man ripoff. To be fair, the trailer promised to make bad guys cry like an anime fan on Conlight, so can you really blame them for not delivering a good game? Another challenge in indie games is visibility. With more accessible storefronts for video games and software development tools, it seems like so many games are being released every day. This can be challenging for indie games to stand out and get noticed by players. This is why indie devs often have to rely on social media, press coverage, and marketing to promote their games. Lastly, since indie games are often developed by a small team or even a single person, it means that developers have to be skilled in many areas, from programming to art design to marketing. Despite these challenges, the indie games industry continues to grow and thrive. They have become an essential part of the video game industry, bringing innovation and fresh new ideas to the medium. They have proven that big budgets and realistic graphics are not always required to create a successful and enjoyable game. Aha! I've become so philosophical, I made an excuse to talk about indie games instead of the actual downfall of gaming. Well, I mentioned bits of it, but the point still stands.